One of the reasons I've moved from Notion to Obsidian is that Notion encouraged me to make things look pretty. So I spent way more time rearranging how something looked than actually taking notes. Obsidian is more minimalist, so I could really focus on the writing. But I do also really seek novelty. So I appreciate that Obsidian has community themes that I can switch out whenever I want. And in fact, I've been pretty guilty in the past of switching themes every few days. However, for the last few months now, I've managed to stick to one theme across all of my vaults. Today I want to talk to you about the theme that has kept me interested for this long. It's called Anupachin. Anupachin isn't like other themes. There's a lot to it, and that also means that there's a lot more to customize. So I'm going to show you my Patreon vault and install it on that so that you can also see how to do it for yourself. So first we'll go into settings and then appearance. You'll see I have the minimal theme, which is just a nice basic theme, but sometimes I just want a little bit of color, you know. So I'm going to go manage here, and then I'm going to type a noop and then install and use. Now, when you first install a noop, there won't be really much of a difference. Uh, you'll see that it's a little bit more purple here, but it's still looking quite minimalist. But that's because you also have to install another plugin that is called Style Settings. Style Settings isn't just for Anupachin. You can use it with any theme. And what it does is it basically exposes a lot of the CSS variables that you could change by going into the CSS yourself, or you could just install Style Settings and then change how things look from there. After installing, I'm going to enable it, and you'll see it already kind of changed, and I'm going to go right into Options. And you'll see Style Settings here, and then Anupachin should also have like its own section here. Because Anup used Minimal as partial inspiration, it'll look pretty much like Minimal with a few slight changes until you go through these options. So I want to go through some of these options and show you the ones that I like to use, but you can really change it yourself. So first in colors here, I'm using the light theme right now because it shows up better on video, although I prefer dark themes, but you can change it slightly. There are two options here, and then for the dark theme, there are four. I'm going to leave it on latte for now, and then you can also choose the accent. Maybe you can choose like flamingo, You'll see that it's a kind of deeper peach. I always like red, of course. That actually looks pretty good to me, so I'm going to leave it there. And then there are also color overrides if you want to change the specific accent colors, which I don't. In the file editor and markdown elements, you'll see there's support for a bunch of different things, including callouts. So you can also enable callout styling so that it's going to be different from the standard one that comes with Obsidian. So let's say it's, well, I don't really like vanilla, so let's say block. And I'll also enable styling for non-collapsible callouts and custom callout colors. And might as well toggle that as well. So let's look at the callouts. Now let's create a callout. I opened up the command palette using command P or control P and then I'll insert a callout. Let's say this is a warning. Install style settings. Okay, let's just see what that looks like. So this is what a callout looks like on Anupachin. If we go back into settings though, and back into style settings for Anupachin, there are also other elements in here like checkboxes. Now the custom checkboxes look a lot like the custom checkboxes that I covered for my video on rapid logging in Obsidian, I was using the minimal theme, but a lot of those custom checkboxes are included here as well. So let's have a look at those. So here are some of the custom checkboxes that Anupachin comes with. If you're on Patreon, I'm going to leave this in the vault so you can kind of have like a cheat sheet of what you need to type on Anupachin to get these different icons. Some of them are very similar to what was in the minimal custom checkboxes and then other ones are just new. And Anupachin also comes with these things called speech bubbles. So if you've enabled them like I have here, then in addition to the check boxes, you can have speech bubbles. And they look 
like this. So they're numbered from zero to nine. So you can test them out for yourself here. This is zero. And that one obviously is red. And this is one. And we can keep going on like this. So these are the speech bubbles that are, as far as I know, only in Anupuchin. And I really love this rainbow palette that it's got going on. And there's more to that as well. So if we go back to style settings, we can go down to workspace. I'm jumping ahead a little bit here. And I'm going to enable rainbow folders because they are awesome. Now what this does, as you can already kind of see from behind there, if you're on the files tab here, you'll see that all of the folders have now been colored according to rainbow colors. You can have it be simple as well, which is not as nice. So I'm just going to do full and you can do simple as well. So here in the simple folder settings, you can select exactly which ones you want to recolor, but those aren't actually as interesting, I think. So I always turn on the full rainbow colors. So I'm going to hit full here. And then there's some more options for full folder settings. But now look, now it's like just this pop of color every time I open that. So it's just, I love that it can look so plain here and then I can open that and bam. Just makes me happy, you know? Other things that are awesome about Anupachin. You can also have numbering for code blocks, which is really good for any developers out there. So for example, if you have code blocks here, you see how there are now numbers with just within the code block. So you can turn on numbering for the entire markdown file for this entire note, but this one just does code blocks. You can also choose whether the code block wraps text or whether it just stays in one line, which can also be useful. I also just like enabling like the lists, tables. I just enable all of the styles because I think they're pretty awesome. Scrolling down to typography here, you can also change the font faces, the font families at least, but really I just leave those the same. I do, however, enable the custom heading colors and margins. And you can actually change each one individually if you'd like, but I just leave it at the default. This is just so I have many different colors for headings. I don't like when they're all the same color because then I can't tell whether something is an H1 or an H2 and except for size, you know, which sometimes, you know, if you have six different heading levels, it's not always easy to just spot the differences in sizes. I also always turn on the decoration. So I'm going to turn that on right now. And this changes the colors for bold and italic. So let's see some of the headings and text decorations. So headings. So that was already heading two. So this is heading three. So here are the different heading colors just from enabling that one thing. I'm also going to check out text decoration. So now this is italic text and it's nice and green. And then to do bold, this is bold text, which is my favorite color, red. I think this solves a lot of the issues for visual differentiation when you just have a block of text. Back in settings, you can darken the canvas background, which is always a good thing for extra contrast, I think. Um, you can also include a custom background. I haven't tried this myself, because I think, I don't know, it's just a little bit busy, but you can select your own image. So I'll disable that. And then you can also enable colorful frames. So I always like this because it just gives a nice pop of color. And I often have multiple vaults open. So like this is an example of the notes that I'm working through. And that was a different color scheme entirely, but it's also using a Nupuchin. That's colorful frames. We already talked about the rainbow browser. So there are also some tab styles here. You can choose depth to have it be more obvious which ones are in the background and which ones are selected or minimalistic where you don't really see it except for this line. And then some safari style things. Um, there's the animated one and the vanilla one. I honestly just prefer the default on this one. And then under workspace layout, is a little bit more hidden, but it is an option called cards. 
And this is the default that I'm looking at now, but if I turn on cards, then it adds this kind of border around every frame. I really love this, especially since this is red. So let's see how that looks. So for example, if I have two notes side by side here, it makes it this just nicely bordered um, two pane thing. And it, there's just a bit more of a separation between notes, which I really love. So here it is with three panes. It just looks so good. And this also extends to the side panes here. Now let's talk about some of the more advanced things that you can do with EndNote, because as if this was not advanced enough, there are some other options that you can use to extend it. For example, this is the GitHub repo for the Anupachin theme. You can go down to snippets here and then select extended color schemes. Now there are a bunch of other ones, but my favorite one is the extended color schemes. This is a CSS, so I am just going to copy that and then open up any text editor. So this could be VS Code, Atom, this is Sublime Text that I've got here, or even like Notepad++, and then just paste everything that was in that snippet and then save it. When saving it, navigate to the folder of the vault and then you may have to show hidden folders. I'm on a Mac and I'm just going to hit Command Shift Dot to show this dot obsidian folder and then there isn't a snippets folder in here yet so i'm going to create one and within that snippets folder i'm just going to call it whatever they called it in the theme repo and then i'll hit save now going back to the obsidian vault now i can click on settings and then appearance scrolling down here it looks like in the css snippets section the extended color schemes file that I saved is already being detected, but it isn't enabled yet. So then I'm going to enable that. And what that does is now when I go into style settings, there's going to be yet another section for Anupachin, which is called Anupachin themes extended. So now I can extend the dark and light themes. This kind of gives me more options. So without this, I just have the two that were here in colors, right? Latte and Rose Pine. And then I could select accents. But in Anupachin Themes Extended, if I enable the light theme, then there are more flavors of the light theme that are just automatically done for you. And the cool thing is that some of these might be familiar because there are other themes that are already present in Obsidian. Like I used this one for a while, the dark versions of all of these anyway. And I just think it's cool, like a little nod. This developer is playing off of other developer stuff. There's also this Notion one, which I actually don't like too much. And then you can also just disable that whenever you want to. I kind of like the red, so I'm going to leave it off for now, but you can switch between them whenever you want. There are actually even more flavors just for the dark theme. And you can also toggle this like deep black, the AMOLED black on all themes. One of the things I really loved about the minimal theme, and also one of the reasons I stayed with it so long, is that it has this cool cards feature, where this is actually a data view query, but it is just presented in a different way. And that's because it's using different CSS classes that are also provided by the minimal developer and now CEO of Obsidian, incidentally, Capano or Stefan Ango. So it's just a different way to present data view query results. And all I had to do was have the CSS classes listed here. I do this a lot for my TTRPGs. As you can see, here are all of the sessions here. And I just like for each one to have an image for me to remember that game session by. Now the cool thing is that was on Anup and you can do cards on Anupachin as well. Here's how. Going back to the Anupachin style setting section, I can scroll down to integrations, click on minimal cards, and there is a link to download the snippet from Capano's GitHub via a link. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to do the same thing, except now take note that this is a .scss. So I'm not going to get into what all that means. I'm also not a front end developer. So I'm just going to show you what to do with that because you can't do the same thing that we just did with the other snippet. So if you're wondering why that snippet is now a .scss instead of a CSS, that's because it has to be compiled into a CSS and we need it to be a CSS in order to be able to use it with Obsidian. 
rather than go into this and teach you how to compile this in VS Code or something, I'm just going to give you the CSS. So check out the link in the description below where you can get a snippet and you'll just be able to copy it and drop it into your vault. If you're on Patreon though, it'll already be in the vault. So here is the Obsidian vault and within Obsidian and snippets, I'm just going to paste that card's CSS. And let me show you what that looks like. Here it is in Sublime Text. This is the CSS version. Now that we've got that, we can go back to Obsidian and go to Appearance and scroll down. And now the card CSS snippet is there as well. Now that it's enabled, we can actually use it. So for example, if I go back to the Anapachin note, I'll type cards here. So I have some items here in a sample database. I've got new item and second item. So it looks like they have type DB item. So I'm just going to try to pull these in in a data view query. So data view table uh, type from sample DB. And let's see what that looks like. All right. Since I didn't specify conditions, I'm getting all of them. That's fine, that will mean that I have more to work with anyway. So this is what it would normally look like. If instead I went up to the top here and entered some YAML front matter with a CSS class, when I scroll down, you'll see that the cards are now displayed horizontally rather than vertically. And I can also control what is actually shown in them. Right now, I only said that I wanted to see the type and they have status and date. So maybe I can put that in as well. So I can put status and date. And now it's showing those three fields. So some of them obviously don't have that stuff. So this is a way that you can use cards. And as you can see in my main vault, you can use images with it as well. And that actually works really well for TTRPG sessions and characters. So that's my current favorite theme, Anupachin. As you can see, it comes with a lot of options, especially with the Style Settings plugin, and also a lot of integrations for some of my favorite themes and some of my favorite other plugins like Kanban, which I didn't even get to show you. If you like this idea of a theme that is super flexible, it really just provides you the framework and you can change so much about it, then maybe consider buying the developer a coffee. The developer's name is Anubis Niket, and I'm gonna leave a link in the pinned comment to their buy me a coffee link. If you're interested in other ways that you can make your notes more appealing, then check out this video where I go over how to create a visual Tetelkasten. Also, shout out to German Hebba, two super cool engineers and viewers of this channel that I met recently in Monaco of all places. It's so great meeting people from the other side of the camera and just connecting with them in real life. Grazie per aver guardato. Thanks for watching.